Hey everybody, this is Brett from Lost Highway. We're here today to uh, do an instructional video on the installation of our interior structure kit. Uh, we're gonna do the first, start out with the roof kit, which is separate from the wall kit. They're sold separately, um, but they work in conjunction with each other to help you build out your interior, hang cabinets or add L-Track. Uh, before we get started with all those parts and unboxing everything to show you what it is, we're gonna go through uh, all the tools you'll need or um, suggested tools and we're going to show you all the hardware that comes with the kit so let's get started okay uh you're going to get it with this kit between the wall kit and the the roof kit both you're going to get a lot of rivets you're going to get uh these 3 16 zinc plated steel rivets uh they're very strong so you're going to need a rivet gun i did not bring one here uh a pneumatic rivet gun is suggested you can get pretty decent ones at Harbor Freight. If, you're, if you don't have one, you want to buy one for this project. It's a good source for it. You can throw it away or take it back if it breaks during the project. You're going to need a lot of 3 16 rivets. Uh, you're going to get a lot of six millimeter, internally threaded six millimeter rib nuts. Uh, we use a pneumatic rib nut gun like this to set these. You're probably not going to want to use the manual uh, hand squeeze rib nut app, uh, installer on this project because you're going to probably do a couple hundred of them. Invest in a pneumatic rib nut gun. Uh, to start setting all your pieces in place, we're also giving you uh, self drillers, uh, little sheet metal screws. These are, you're going to get a big bag of these, maybe 30 50 to 50 or something, depending on which kit you get. Um, these are temporary. You're going to use these to set things in place, pull your measurements, and you're going to remove these screws and then uh, they enlarge the hole with a 3 16 or clearance 3 16 drill to set your rivet. Um, these will come in handy, so you'll get a good bag of those. To set these, little 12 volt or 20 volt screw gun, Phillips drive, nice compact, that's what we use for, the, for that. Um, you'll also wanna get a half inch cordless drill. Um, that, with that, you're gonna get the, uh, you're gonna wanna use the clearance size, which will give you to set your rib nuts but you're also gonna use that drill in some places to use a 3 16 drill, clearance holes, things like that. So always have a drill on hand. Um, you're gonna need a 3 16 drill bit, nice clean new one if you have one, and an 11 30 seconds drill bit. And we're gonna show you in the installation process why you're gonna use these and what you're gonna to do to locate some of our pieces with the drill bits. Um, the level, do not use a level, throw it away. It's here for just an example. You don't want to level your pieces in the van because you don't know if the van's level. Do not use a level. We're going to give you all the stuff that you need to install this um, without having to use that. Get a tape measure. You need a tape measure. You will need a Sharpie. I brought two because we're always going to lose one. Uh, you need, this is a helpful tool, just a ball of, of uh, twine. Get a loop tied in the end, and I'll show you in the install process how we're going to use this. Not necessary, but it's a good it's a good reference for what you're going to uh, some of the dimensions you're going to need. Roll a good good wide blue masking tape. That's good. You can use tape or some magnets. You can get like some uh, you know the welding fixture magnets from Harbor Freight or a tool supply place that could hold some of your stuff in place. Or tape works for us. Uh, slide square, maybe not necessary. Might be helpful for some measuring. Just on their suggested tool and another suggested tool is a small file. Now, all of our parts are steel, galvanite steel, then powder coated. Uh, we're kind of working through some details here on this. So you might get um, some powder built up in some of these edges, some powder coat where it might drip or sag into there. And with our tight tolerances on how these parts interlock, you may need to take a file and just if it's not fitting, file the powder coat off, and then in your install process, you can always add a little bit of paint in there for rust preventative if you've taken the powder coat off. So you'll see us use this in the process while we're locking these pieces together in the van. Uh, one of the last big helpful things, another Harbor Freight item or wherever else you get it, uh, we use these ratcheting load bars quite a bit here in the shop for uh, installing cabinets, things like that to extend, they can ratchet up. These will be helpful in your roof beam and roof structure uh, install process to hold things in place. If it's a one man operation, you might need it on a high roof, might need wood block, set it up on to gain a little more height. 
if you're doing it by yourself. If you have a buddy with you, these are not necessary, um, but you, they do come in handy for holding things in place while you're kind of pulling some measurements and setting everything else. All right, so I think that's probably about it for our hardware. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything. If it is, if I am missing anything in the install process, we'll go back through and explain to you what we're doing. Um, let's go ahead and unbox some of these parts and show you all the, the pieces that go along with it. Okay, we're gonna start with the roof structure kit first. When you get this kit, either, not when you pick it up, but when it gets shipped to you, you're gonna get it in two boxes. They're about uh, eight inch by eight inch by 70 something. This is what comes in your two boxes. Uh, we're gonna open these here in a minute. This is the roof beam covers, um, the wall transitions, and then the front, the north to south beams that go in the, in the attached to them both. And a box of, box of hardware. So let's go ahead and tear these open and we'll go through it piece by piece. Okay, we've unboxed the 170 roof structure kit. We're gonna walk through this real quick. I'm not gonna give a lot of details on this. We'll give more details as we install and uh, what the parts do as we're doing the install installation process. Uh, comes with a box of 3 16 rivets. Should be plenty there for you. One thing I'm gonna highlight real quick on these roof beam covers in your van, when I say roof beam, you've got uh, east to west factory structural runners that run across the ceiling up there. These are gonna cover those up. Uh, that gives you, it blanks out all the factory holes, gives you all fresh new metal. I don't know if you can see it here or not, but on the center tab on all of these, these are all universal, there's a little notch that we've put in there, kind of a little crow's foot. Uh, that's important. That's going to be a little indicator that you're going to use to find the center line of the van. This has to land directly on center of that measurement. And we're going to show you that in the install process. Also, in one of these, on one of these, you're going to have a label. I'm not sure where it's at on one of these here, but uh, it's going to tell it's going to tell you to cut off one of these ears on just one bracket. Uh, there should be a sticker on here that tells you cut this off. That one piece, the bracket where you cut the ear off, goes at your sliding door. The stamping in the sliding door is a little bit wide in that area, and that needs to be removed, and then a little touch-up paint on it to keep it from rusting, because it's, it's too wide for this to fit over. But these are universal, so did, we don't want to make just a single part that gets put in there, and then it'll get installed in the wrong position. It has to be removed, so we just have you remove the tab on that one roof beam cover before you start the project, okay? We'll show you how that's done. Um, we have these nice transition pieces that go from the wall to the ceiling. These actually kind of hide your factory wiring harness in the wall and give you a place for the roof panel, upholstery panel to land, and a place for the, uh, the wall panel to attach to. Uh, we've got um, the north to south runners that will interlock with the east to west beams. Um, you got several of these. They're labeled forward A. Different different labels will be on there to show you which where they go. Um, the 170 has some additional ones to the 144, obviously. These two here, a different length. And the rear on the 144 is about 16 long. These are 9 long. So you're going to see a few different parts between this install kit on the 170 and the 144. But we'll show you those differences when we get to that point. Um, these little guys, these brackets attach to the header beam right above the headliner where you sit in the van. Um, we're going to put those in, obviously. And these are the rear brackets. You got three of these. They're going to attach in the rear of the van over the two back doors. So that's the gist of your parts. Um, like I said, some of these are different than the 144, but we'll show you that when we get to that install process. Okay. Okay. As mentioned earlier, we've located the roof beam cover with the label on it that says cut off, insert at sliding door. So now we're going to cut off this tab. We'll walk you through that and then we'll set it aside and that's going to be the one that goes to the sliding door. Okay, to cut this tab off, we're using just an abrasive cutoff wheel. You can use a jigsaw if you'd like or whatever. You're just going to cut run right along this, this edge here. We'll cut from the inside and take that tab off. Just like that. The first stage of your roof structure install kit is to find center line, left to right center line of these structural roof members. 
you have seven of them on a 170 plus there's one up forward above the headliner uh, these are not installed very accurately from the factory but one thing that you can really count on is that there's a there's three components here there's the outer stampings there's one two and there's the middle hat channel stamping the outer stampings are usually pretty accurate as far as where they're located they really can't go left to right if you notice and you're looking at your van the center stamping can float between the two so we don't want to trust that that has a center line to it we want to make a center line on that unit and by doing that we want to locate the edge where the middle channel goes into the outer stamping on both sides and we want to pull a dimension so I don't have my reading glasses on but right now I'm at about 41 and a half inches so it doesn't matter that we're not contacting here on our tape measure we're just getting a span measurement so 41 41 and a half okay that's your overall dimension so we're gonna take we're gonna divide that in half we're gonna make a mark here on center and then I'll show you how this guy lines up to that middle mark okay here's where we're gonna need a sharpie uh, this dark colored van I grabbing my silver sharpie so we can see the line have a tape measure and this is where a slide square comes in handy you don't need this but I like to use it so 41 and a half we're gonna measure 21 and three quarters 20 and three quarters sorry I'm gonna make a mark a little crow's foot there with a sharpie we're gonna put our slide square on it and we're gonna transfer that line guys can't see it from there we're gonna go vertical line on that roof beam okay we're gonna continue that we're gonna be down on this one and all seven all the way to the front of the van that's gonna be where you're gonna start go ahead and check it from this side make sure that 20 and three quarters is good and then do check from both sides as you work your way all the way to the front of the van 41 and a half Oop. 20 and three quarters. Okay, so there we're at 41 and a quarter, which is a different measurement. So you might find that as you go down. That's why you gotta take your full measurement and divide those in half. Yeah, 41 and a quarter. 41 and a quarter. We'll grab our slide square. And make your center mark. Okay, as you can see, we've got our center lines laid out on our beams, uh, measuring between this edge and that edge all the way up, all seven plus the one above the headliner. We did find about three different dimensions between these two uh, as we move forward. So you always, that's why you always wanna measure between here and here. Whatever that dimension is, divide it in two, mark your center line, and then double check. Measure from there to your center line, measure from there to your center line. That way you know that you've pulled the right dimension, you divided it correctly, and then don't trust that that's gonna be the same dimension as this one. It could be different. So work your way up, take your time, and make sure you get that center line accurate. Now is a good time. Also, if your van comes with the, uh, which they all do pretty much, come with styrofoam blockouts here. Some come with styrofoam along here. It's time to remove that. It's held on with some kind of crazy NASA tape. So it's really hard to pop that off, get it clean, remove that, save these blockouts. You're probably going to use them. You might upholster them or save them, trim them down or whatever. You want to find a center line between this one and this one. Same as the rest and mark it here because we're going to mount some brackets on here based off of this center line. Okay. Uh, during our last filming session, we had some uh, equipment issues. Uh, so we're trying to kind of overlap what we did. I'm going to try and cover some X some bases here and maybe uh, you might get some little more information twice. Or you might get information twice. You might be missing something during the edit. So uh, what we have here now is we have all of our center lines marked uh, all the way forward, even up to the front beam. Uh, underneath the factory front headliner. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put in the first roof rib cover here. 
not necessarily the first one, but we're just gonna put one in, give you an idea of how, how this goes. And then we'll go from back to front all the way down. You can see on this, there's a little notch on these right in the middle. That's gonna be your center point. You're gonna line that up with your center that you, your mark you made. And I've already got a hole here because we already preset this. Um, and we're gonna run this in with one of the self-drilling screws that we provided you just to hold it in place. Uh, again, these self drillers, they are not permanent fasteners for the roof rib covers. They're just to hold things in place until you guys go through and put your rivets in. So we'll get this one set. Okay, then we're gonna show you the roof rib cover that goes at the sliding door location. Um, again, where we cut the tab off of it. You'll notice right here at the back of your sliding door, this stamping is wider in the front. Um, so this part, portion with the missing tab faces forward. Like that. Line your center line up. And that will allow you to push that all the way up into position. Okay, we're going to highlight one of the little tools we had mentioned earlier in the video. Um, this is how you use it. You might need a couple of wood blocks or something to kind of make it a little longer. This is a real uh, help if you're by yourself. You want to push these all the way up in contact with the, the structural beam in the roof. These are nice to kind of jack it up like so. Hold it in place and you can put one on each side and then you can go through and run your screws. So that's kind of where we were at with this little guy. We like to use these if it's a one-man operation or just to get a little extra leverage on the on the beam there all right okay so now we're going to go ahead and install all of these all the way front to back you don't have to put a sheet metal screw in every hole you just got to put it somewhere in the middle for locating it and then maybe like one out here at the end at the ends before you go through and pre-drill and again do not use these sheet metal screws as a permanent fastener you're provided 3 16 rivets sheet metal screws will vibrate out you want to go through and pre-drill and then rivet these are only temporary okay so let's get these installed and then we'll go to the next step Okay, we've got all the roof ribs in, uh, tacked into place with sheet metal screws. Typically we do two in the middle, two on the far outside just to hold everything in place before we go through and start drilling for rivets. Uh, before we do that, what we wanna do is, what we can do is another way to double check our center lines on these units is to run back here. You can put a sheet metal screw in one of your slots, leave it kind of exposed, the head exposed, take your string line, Hook it on there. Walk your way all the way to the front of the van. Just old school trick. String line the middle of this same slot as the back one and just give it a visual. visual. Make sure that all your holes line up and that'll tell you that you're going to be good when you go to put your north to south beams in. All right, everything looks good. So now it's time to rivet these in before we move on to showing you how to locate the north to south runners these have to be riveted in first because uh, some of these will cover some tabs and you when you rivet these in you won't be able to access that so you got to get now go through and pre-drill and rivet all your rough beams in okay so we jacked this into place we lined up our slots set a screw here moved to the back and lined up these slots set a screw there temporarily we're going to move to the front this and you'll notice that I'm not quite contacting but I'm very close uh, you'll also notice that the longer slots on this end are they're a little bit longer than the say the back end that's kind of an indicator to show you that this goes towards the front that way if your label your part is not labeled uh, like it should be then your your longer slotted end on this piece goes towards the front beam 
this beam's a little bit harder than the rest, so we're going to pre-drill this and not use uh, uh, self-drillers. This bracket that's labeled A goes line the slots up with the north to south beam. As best as you can, flush this surface to the roof beam right there. Hold them together, clamp them. Because this has got to be flushed so that your headliner can your headliner panel can dive into the headliner of the van. And what we'll do is we'll pre-mark them. The Sharpie there. And there. Remove it. Re Drill it and then set our rivets into there to hold this bracket in place. Once the front two north to south beams are in place, we'll start moving back to, backwards in the van. Okay, again, in the 144 and 170, the two front north to south beams are 40, 43 and 3 8 long. Um, that's typical in both vans. The next one is in line moving towards the rear of the van. 64 and a quarter. That's typical. 64 and a quarter, 64 and a quarter, typical for a 144 and 170. You'll also see a forward label on it, which means it tells you which direction it goes when it saddles over the roof beams. Right there, lines up perfect. And we'll go ahead and start putting these in. While Tristan's installing the rest of the north to south covers, one thing I wanted to talk to you about is uh, when you go through and permanently drill into here uh, to set your rivet to hold those uh, beams in place, you either want to make a drill stop on your drill bit, uh, simple, super simple one, just tape, tape it, only, you know, maybe come down three quarters of an inch, wad a bunch of tape around there, or you can go, you can buy a shaft collar put on there or a short shank drill bit. But here's what will happen if you don't. Your drill bit can be long, can be longer then this is deep. If you go to drill in, that sheet metal sucks it up, you're gonna hit the roof of your van and knock a hole in it. So you always wanna set a drill guide, a drill stop, when you're drilling, uh, pre-drilling these holes for the north to south covers to go in. And we're gonna use that drill stop a little bit later in the van also in some other areas. Okay, in the 170, we have these two additional pieces that run front to back. The 144 stops with these. Um, they go to here on the 170, and then we've got this little fill-in piece that continues your transition back to the door. In a 144, these are about 16 inches long, and they, they finish out behind this one. Uh, they're going to go, they have a, a rearward uh, sticker on them. It says uh, rear B. This is the corresponding bracket that's going to uh, mount to the... Uh, back door post you'll get two of these and you'll get a middle you, the middle just can mount by itself and it helps transition and gives you some support for your roof panel if you take your light out or whatever when you're upholstering all this kind of stuff and the Terra wagon uh, tidy trim kit covers that stuff up real nice so uh, this will all get riveted in and uh, it helps keep conceal your uh, factory wiring harness up out of the way also so now that we got the roof beam kits in we're going to move into the wall transitions we already started installing one We'll go up and explain how all that works and carry it all the way to the back of the van. Okay, the last few pieces in the uh, roof structure kit are our wall to roof transition panels. Uh, these are not very accurate where you put them. It's, it's, they just kind of run this direction front to back. Uh, they are, do you have a stamping here, a cutout to go around the stamping in the wall. So as long as they're clear there, you just can pre-drill, go ahead and rivet those in. Uh, there's no real bad consequence if you get them off a little bit. They're they're just for the wall panel to hit and uh, ceiling panel to land into. Uh, this one, the first one here says a forward, should be facing forward. Uh, the next one in line on the 170 has just one hole in the middle and it'll go up. You push it up in place, make sure your wiring harness is tucked in behind it. 
you can leave a gap here between the two, not that critical. And then we'll go ahead and screw it in here, screw it in there, temporarily hold it before we take the screws out and, and uh, permanently rivet it in. Okay, the rear sections for the rich, the transition pieces on the 170 and 144 are a little more obvious. They say rear, put that towards the door, and you'll see there a miter cut here. That kind of helps clear uh, the Terra Wagon Tidy Trim Kit and gives you some extra room. Um, we'll go ahead and put this in. This will be the last piece for the wall kit. We took our wiring harness out of the way. Okay, so as you can see, down front to back, the transition pieces are in. Now we're ready to move on to the wall bracing kit that allows you to put L-Track in your walls. Okay, we're gonna start with the wall bracing kit. Uh, this will allow you, gives you just some, uh, some structure on the walls to cover up a lot of the holes, all the factory holes. Uh, if you use some fresh metal like our roof beams do, and also gives you a hole layout so that you can go through and uh, drill and set rib nuts if you wanna put L-Track in for uh, vertical L track for beds or horizontal for tie downs or whatever. So, what we're going to start with here um, is the F piece. It's basically the, the, the first piece you want to install on driver and passenger side. Everything sort of builds off this guy. Uh, like we talked about earlier, 11 30 seconds drill bit um, and a 3 16 drill bit. Right now, these, I mean, these come in handy. This is what we're going to use to locate this bracket into the wall. Um, there's a factory hole here on 170s and 144s. If you find this middle seam, you're going to take this bracket, your 11 30 seconds drill bit, through the bracket, through the strip, into this large hole, just like that. Hold it there, don't drop your drill bit, and you're going to put a sheet metal screw right here to temporarily hold it in place. Okay, so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna show you the next step. Remove your drill bit. So there are some higher line holes. This are gonna be for rib nuts and L-Track. Your vertical row holes is gonna be for rib nuts and L-Track. And we'll kind of walk you through where those are as we move down. Once you have that set, you're gonna take the long edge of the, beat of the bracket here and you're just gonna line it up parallel with the body seam all the way down. And you're gonna get another screw set somewhere right in here. And then I'll hold this in place until we get all the other brackets put in place. Okay, the 170 kits and 144 kits come with uh, four identical pieces that move from this bracket back. You're gonna do one, two, three, four. We're gonna start with the tops first and work our way back. Uh, you'll notice that these have a notch in each end. They indicate on the tabs and the tabs, they do not go forward because they don't indicate. So you have to line up uh, this notch with that tab. This one again, like I mentioned earlier, had a little bubble of powder coat there. So what I did is took a file, kind of clean it off. If you need to, you can put a little more uh, Rust pretty of paint on there before you install it. Uh, we line this tab up just like that. And then what we'll do is we'll move back here, hold that in place. You can tape it, hold it with a magnet. We'll take our 3 16 pin or drill bit and we'll line this up with the hole in the body and the factory body of the van. 
check our tab, make sure it's good. And then we'll put a sheet metal screw right there in that square indicator hole. Okay, now we're ready to move to our next one. Okay, next we're gonna skip this section right here. We're gonna move to our, our furthest section back, our rear corner. This is a typical piece in the 170s and 144s. We're gonna, like we did the middle piece, we're gonna take this large hole, we're gonna line up with the factory hole, and we're gonna put a temporary screw in place. So we'll take our 11 30 seconds bit, locate that elevation, and we got a screw hole here. We can go ahead and run a self tapper into that. Okay. Pull your drill bit out, and then we're gonna grab the other piece that goes in the top. And it's going to lock into here and give us the square uh, dimension we need to, to fasten the bottom into the wall. So now that we've located uh, this last piece for the 170 and uh, into this notch of our corner piece, that kind of helps square up the corner section. Uh, we got a per temporary screw holding us there. What I like to do is uh, double check some of our dimensions here. So I'll take just a framing square. Um, do not square this to your van floor because your van floor might, if you're especially a stock floor, it might have waves in it or whatever. Some aftermarket floors are a lot flatter. I usually stick this guy down here in the crack behind it and go to the actual metal of the van floor. Just double check, um, put a square on it, make sure it's square to the floor. That should be good to the van. Um, and then put one screw back here in the back just to pin it in place while we pull a dimension. Check that again. And what we're going to do is before we do any final rib nut setting, we're going to check center of this hole on the rear corner with the tape measure. And we're going to move all the way up here. And we're going to check center of the corresponding hole on this piece. And you can do it down low and you can do it in the middle and do it up top and just make sure you got a good, the same dimension all the way down. If not, you can kind of fudge that rear corner around to make sure that you got an equal dimension between these all the way front to back. Okay, in a 144, uh, the last rear piece on the bottom will indicate into this notch uh, and give the elevation height that it needs between the two, because we're gonna wanna check the dimension between this hole and the one below it, and make sure that those are the same all the way down. Right now, we're gonna move forward in the 170, we're gonna show you what this little tool does that we give you. Um, there's a throwaway device, not powder coated, but what it's going to do here, uh, same thing. You take your, uh, your bar with the holes up high for the L-Track and you're going to lock it into this tab over here and you're going to set a temporary screw to hold it in place. Whoa. One there. Okay, what this does, we want to come all the way to the far back. We're going to, actually, we don't want to come all the way to the far back, sorry. We're going to use this uh, the structural beam here to kind of contour this piece. What we'll do is we'll go to our second hole from the end. We can let that one kind of hang. We're going to put a screw in. We'll screw this through that hole. And don't worry, it's going to get a rib nut later. Okay. And when that contours the wall like so, push it in. You're gonna raise your yellow piece up to where those holes line up. You're gonna set a screw in there. Okay, that's gonna give your elevation that you need between these holes and these holes and it'll keep everything parallel. This is temporary, it will come out but that's gonna come out after you've set some rib nuts. So now we're gonna to move to the last piece back and be about finished up. Okay, now that we've used our, our guide, our, our elevation guide to locate this piece here, we take our last lower piece, we lock it in to the back, uh, set one screw in there, you can let it float. And then what we do is we broke this screw loose down here um, to let this float around because we were off on dimension a little bit between holes and we center up this bar in this notch and then butt this to the edge, just like that. Put temporary screws in, we should be good to go. Okay, 
Now we'll go ahead and we'll check, recheck these dimensions between this vertical row of holes and the vertical row of holes on our vertical forward. Um, once you got everything in place and pinned down temporarily, you're gonna do the passenger side. It's just a mirror image of this. Um, and then we can start actually setting real rivets in place of so the sheet metal screws and working our way through rib nut installation. Okay. Uh, to move forward in the van, 144 and 170, you have the other bar that has a blank end uh, and a tab on one end. Tab goes into the mid piece, the blank end goes towards the front. And again, your L track holes are gonna be high. We're gonna temporary screw. And we're gonna pick up our factory guide hole here with a pin. To locate the elevation, we're gonna set a set screw there. Okay, that'll be in place. We can add more screws up here and rivets if we want. The lower one is the same exact scenario. Tabs lock in the slots, and then we'll have this whole wall complete. 